So, um, you know, when the word came for uh, Deacon Senior, God also specifically said, I humiliated you. And, you know, you know, you hear me say, you know, when God is humbling you, the word humiliation, humble humiliation, right? So you're going to get humiliated to a degree. And God told them, basically, I've been watching you. You've endured. You passed your test. And, and even sometimes God has to isolate you. So in a way, when... You can stand right here. When, uh, I think when they went to uh, Tracy, to me, it felt like they were sent to exile, you know, and, and like, the, you know, like during the Babylonian times. So kind of sent to like exile. And, and so they, I'm sure they felt like alone and isolated. And so when God does that, you have to think, you know, because you're going to have two choices, right? You're going to either get really mad or you have to think why this is happening. And so in that time, when you think, you have to know, okay, you know you can't get mad or offended even though you're going to be struggling with that. When you get to a true breaking process, what you thought you were going to chase or what you thought you're chasing after is not going to matter. You're thinking you're chasing after, uh, you know, wealth, spiritual experience, or uh, some type of physical breakthrough, perhaps, even spiritual breakthrough. And the, the breaking is, is supposed to bring you to the cross. The revelation that you're supposed to get is that you're a sinner and God is saving you. And I don't think a lot of us have gotten there yet. Like the Old Testament, you're given the law, which is you're given the word, and you're being taught, you know, because you don't have the, your own will or habit to read and pray and, and do the right thing because you're a sinner, you know, and, and you come from the world. Do you know that you particularly, you know, what Christians do, um, you, you don't realize it, but a lot of times you're bowing down to other idols when you leave the church. When you're in the church, we act holy and we act very committed to God. But when you leave the church, you're actually compromising. Okay, and, and the majority of Christians out there compromise a lot. It's just like when they were uh, uh, during Daniel's time, right? If, if you look at Daniel, the idol that the king made basically says, well, you know, you can believe what you want, but you're going to bow down to our way, and we will include your religion, basically. And you can, you can think it's your religion, but you're going to bow down. And so... They were, in a sense, bowing down. When they hear the music playing, they're bowing down. Most of the, you know, God's people. And so what that means in today's term is like, you can come to church and you act all holy. But when you step out of church and you're with your coworkers, your friends, your relatives, or you're by yourself playing with your phone or on the internet, you're acting like the world. You're talking like the world, perhaps. And, you know, we're all guilty of that, of course. Kind of, you know, doing a little, you still have their uh, traits, if you will. God said, be holy for I am holy. You see, we're still moving in that direction. But some of us are, like, still on lap one, right? And while the others are, I don't want to say lap, because that's just going to, oh, maybe it is lap for some people. But... Our life is a journey, you know, and, and the process, the journey is just as important. God wants you to learn uh, besides the breakthrough. We're always going after the breakthrough, right? Because we want the deliverance. We want the, we want the gratification. And so no one tells us that we have to go through the process. No one really tells us that we have to get wisdom and learn love. We just want to. We just want to, you know, we want the gratification. And, then, and you come, you have this problem, we have this problem because you've been molded with culture. 
you see, culture. And, and so you're bringing your own golden calf into the church, into your belief system. You're bringing your own, you're carrying your idols. You got to think, God said to Moses' people, was it to, me, did you, was it to me you really sacrificed? Was it to me you really worship? And he told them, you're, no, you're worshiping the, the star God and, and the destiny God. They were, they were into prophetic too. They want to know the future. And so they were carrying their cultural Egyptian influence because they didn't know any better. And so they're trying to, you know, they're trying to f- figure out how to do this, but they had a hard time of just letting go. Knowing that when they exited Egypt, that is a new beginning. The old must go. The reason why you are still clashing with yourself, with your spouses, at work, at school, at your, with your friends, whatever, whatever you're clashing with is because you're, you're still, you're trying to be the new wine without letting go of the old sack. You're no sack. Okay? That's why Uranus will inflame. inflame. It blows up. Your, if you want to be the new wine, the rebirth, every, the new, you have to be in a new sack. Right? The new wine sack. And you have to think, what does that mean? What does that mean? Your thinking process, it starts over. You're not black, you're not Mexican, you're not Korean, you're, not, you're now a kingdom, uh, uh, a citizen of kingdom first. So you cannot bring that culture, you cannot bring that baggage, you cannot bring that biasness. Cultural wise, nationality, even your traumas and, and what you don't want to let go, that's your old sack. You're trying to be the new person in the old life. And that's why you're colliding with God. And you're colliding with yourself. And I want you to really think about that, okay? And in order for God to break you, he's going to, he's going to use a lot of different measures and strategies. And he's going to use your family members. He's going to use your pastors. He's going to use your job, your situation. And it's going to feel like Sometimes, I guess you can even feel like, you know, if you look at Psalms 42, the deer is panting. That's how you're going to feel. You're, you're like, where are you, God? Why aren't you answering my prayers? You're just like exhausted to the end. Do you know that God will come at the end? You need to understand this. If you don't hold on to the end, you're going to miss the boat. Okay, you need to hold on to the end. He's going to squeeze you to the end until you realize you need him and that there's no way you're going to you're going to save yourself. Right. And so um, word comes to them. And you have to understand some for some of you. They've been here basically 12 years with us. Okay, the hopes have been with us for 12 years. And, you know, Senior Hope initially came because he read about the fireworks and he wanted to experience the fire, the spiritual experiences. And he didn't get it, right? And I think God's going to let him know that it's not really about that, right? I have come to save you and I need you to realize the cross, what I've done for you at the cross. That's what's going to save us, right? Not your experience and not, not he, he'll use those things to bring you here, yes. But you have to come to realize, uh, even though you, we, we come thinking that we are saved, and you may be, but you are still need to go through a lot of process. Amen? You have to go through a process, you know, as, as you are being saved. And some of the things that the Lord revealed to my wife and I, I you need to trust us. Even, even though we don't tell you every, any, a lot of things directly, you do, you do need to trust us because we know things that you don't know. And tomorrow I'm going to put up Heidi up here. And she's going to tell you her experience 
for going to another church for a while. I think for some of you, if you want to butt heads, you can go six months, one year somewhere else and see how that feels. It's almost a guarantee you're going to come back if you didn't get beat up already over there. And if when you come back or if you don't go and you stay, you need to realize why it's not working for you if you're in that position. Why is it not working? It's not the pastors. It's you. You haven't fully surrendered. You haven't surrendered. You're bringing your, you're bringing your baggage or your sauce and you're trying to force it into this ministry, whether you realize it or not. And you're trying to get us to recognize you that you might have some contribution or some you brought something to the table. When, when, when God brings people here, you don't bring nothing to the table. Okay, No one brings nothing to the table. We start over. And, and there's no one, in, like I said, there's no one in this church that, that would have changed the outcome here. All right? There's no, if one of you didn't show up, it doesn't mean the outcome is not where we're at today. And you need to, you need to understand that. Otherwise, you're big-headed, thinking that because of you, we actually got to this place. That's very, very prideful, actually. Because you're thinking that without you, this God couldn't have done this. That's what, that's what that thought process does. And so that's, that's a lack of surrender, right? So I want you to, you know, we're in the season, revival season, breakthrough and deliverance season. You need to humble yourself. And, and you know, uh, Deacon Senior and Janina has been crying out to God. And you need to understand, sometimes for them, 12 years before this breakthrough, right? Could have been earlier, maybe, but still, for those who've been here less, you can't expect a big breakthrough overnight. Sometimes you're going to have to pay a price and just kind of go through, because God's testing you. He's testing you to see your choice. You can say, I choose. I, I, I choose, but okay, let's see. Let's, let me put you through the fire. Let me put you through some tests and see if what you say, what you've chosen is actually truth. And if you can't handle that, then you, you, you've lied. You see, you've lied then. And so, and, and you don't understand God's process, right? You, you can speak to each other and go, okay, I'm telling you the truth or not. But God's conversation is different, right? He's more like... It's not a one-time conversation. God's like, okay, I'm going to put you, and we'll see. Amen.